Everybody knows the story about Elijah, and especially with the prophets of Baal. And we know what he did. Uh, they had the big showdown. Everybody comes together. The prophets of Baal will show up, and they say, okay, let's gather the wood, and let's put it on an altar, and let's do all this. Now, one of the things that they did, and it's common knowledge back then, that when they would do these sacrifices and they would have these uh, miraculous type events, they were staged. And so they would get the driest wood and they would put it on the altar. And then as they were building it, one of their prophets would put a small fire under it when nobody was looking. And then they would stand back and they would try to call down fire. And in, but instead of calling it down, they would call on their God to cause the fire to erupt. And eventually, sometimes, the fire actually did catch, and all of a sudden there was a fire, and everybody thought it was miraculous. Well, and you know the story, because Elijah is there, and they're trying to do this, but now this time they couldn't put a false fire under it, uh, probably because Elijah was watching. And he was standing back, and they start yelling. They start crying to, to their God. And they start begging him to show up, and they're doing all this stuff. And it was amazing because they start dancing, and then they start shouting, and then they sing some more. And the thing goes on almost all day, and it goes on and on and on and on. And they got all, you know, they're getting everybody worked up. And it was amazing because Elijah, now you know we always hear the songs, the spirit of Elijah, the days of Elijah, awesome songs. And it's funny because you look at those songs, and everybody, if you ask anybody, you know, would you like to have the spirit of Elijah? Oh, yeah, I'd love to have the spirit of Elijah. Well, to get the spirit of Elijah, first, you have to develop a smart aleck attitude. Because <laughs> Elijah was a smart aleck. Because while they're trying to get their God to show up, Elijah's sitting over on the side making fun of them. Now, that's not polite. That'd be like going down to the Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall and standing there and you know, while they're doing their thing, you're sitting there, well, why didn't this happen? Why didn't your God heal? Why didn't your God do this? And just making fun. Well, see, we don't do that. Why? Because we have manners. But many times we also don't have the power of the spirit of Elijah. Why? Because sometimes our manners keep us from doing what God wants us to do. And that's called social etiquette, right? We've all heard that recent. So, but Elijah sitting over there, and at one point he says, hey, uh, you know, maybe your God is, uh, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe you need to yell louder, maybe so you can wake him up. And then he started saying, well, maybe your God has gone on a journey somewhere. Maybe he's a distance off. Maybe you need to, to wait till he gets back or, or get him to come back. And then they, he even said at one point, maybe your God is in the toilet. Maybe, maybe he had to go use the restroom. Maybe he'll be back. We'll see. And they got all upset, of course. And then finally, Elijah stands up and says, okay, you've had your chance. Now, the thing that stands out about Elijah is a couple of things, a lot of things, actually. But one of them was that when he got up there, he said, all right, here's what we're going to do. Get a whole lot of water. How many of you know water is the enemy of fire, right? If you're calling fire, the last thing you want is water. But Elijah calls for water. He says, bring water, bring more water, get some more water. Matter of fact, make sure every, all the wood is soaked. Make sure it even feels... The, the troughs around it and everything to make sure it's soaked. And then he stands back and calls down fire from heaven. And God hears and answers. And when he shows up, God I'm talking about, not only does he burn up the wood, he burns up the altar. He completely evaporates all the water. I mean, everything is consumed. Why? Because our God is a consuming fire. Come on. Now, the, the neat thing is with inanimate objects, and some, sometimes even inanimate objects, he does the same thing, like with the burning bush. What did he do? When he's there, it gets on fire. It didn't consume it. In other words, it didn't burn it up. But it caught on fire, which caused Moses to go by and see it. Anybody that has the Spirit of God has a fire. Come on. There's no such person that knows God and knows his word and doesn't have a fire. Right? So we don't, we don't always have to call for the fire. Now, understand, I understand what we're doing. But what I'm saying is that if we would just believe the word of God, we will let the fire out. Now, today we call it fire. In Jesus' day, they'd call it light. Why? Because that's how they got light. They had a torch, and so they had a fire, and that gave them light. And Jesus said to let your light so shine that men will see your good works, 
So your good works is that light that's shining. And he said, he'll glorify your father, which is in heaven, by those good works that you let shine. Now, so Elijah does this. He calls the fire down. Everything catches on. But notice the principle of Elijah. And the principle is this. This is one of the main principles of Elijah. Make it harder for God. Don't make it easier. Why? God don't like easy. He likes to show out. He likes the hard cases. See, a lot of people shy away from the hard cases. God likes the hard cases. Why? Because only God can do that. Those things are impossible. So too often we try to make it too easy for him. We try to settle. I remember when I first started, I needed, believe it or not, I needed $300. $300 would have completely paid my bills at the time. Okay? How many of you know that was a long time ago? <laughs> <coughs> so, Come on. but at that time, that's what I needed. And I was praying, and I was believing, and I, at least I thought I was. And I was going through all this stuff, and then one day I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, why is this taking so long? Why is this? I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and you know, I'm sowing, I should be reaping, and why is it taking so long? And God told me, he said, you're eating your seed. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then I had to, we'd already run out of money. And I had two children, both were in diapers, and we needed Baby food, we needed our food, we needed everything, bills for the rent, you know, just all, all kinds of stuff. And so God told me that. So I said, okay, I went around the house, found some stuff to take down to the pawn shop. Wasn't trying to pawn it, I sold it. Went down there and dumped it off. It was things you wouldn't even know about today, things like called eight-track tape decks, okay? <laughs> so some of you don't know what that is, look it up. You might be able to find it on Google. I don't even know if it's there anymore. <clears throat> I'm sure it'd be under antiquities, whatever it is. But <laughs> So I found these things, and I found an old camera, and sold them, and then took the money 35 miles on a bicycle each way, 35 each way. It wasn't snowing, and it wasn't uphill both ways, I will tell you that. But I did have to take it over there, and I sold it. And that night, now I've cut the, sh the story really short here, but on that, that night, on the way back home, there was a lot of opportunities for me to give up. Because nothing happened in the beginning. I didn't see anything happen. But then I crossed a, a major intersection, and there was my money in a, in a wallet in the middle of the intersection. I saw the wallet. I stopped. I was on a 10-speed bicycle, okay, because I didn't have a car and didn't have gas at the time, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But so I get off. I get that wallet. I look at it. There's $300, exactly what I needed. And as I looked on through it, I found the $10 that was the money I actually had to sow his seed. God not only gave me back my, the, my, the money that I had done, but also the seed that I had sown, he gave me that back. So with the seed, because I only needed $300, I did not need $310. So I walked across the street to a 7-Eleven, got an ice cold Coke. It was so good. might have been the best <laughs> Coke I ever drank. Anyway, uh, then I called my wife, and when she answered the phone, I said, guess what? She said, you got it. And I said, I got it. I'm on my way home. Let me tell you, that was an easier ride than the ride over. Now, I'm saying that because we learned as we went. There was a lot of things. I have this habit. I read stories of great men of God, and I believe them. And well, Especially when they point back to God, and I see a principle of God there. And so I've studied Wigglesworth. I've studied John Lake. You said 18th of March. You all started broadcasting. That's John Lake's birthday just by the way. And so that was on the same day you started the broadcast during the COVID and all the stuff going on. So kind of fitting because he was known for stopping plagues and things like that. So anyway, so 